Hello guys, today we will study about episcleritis. From the word itis, we know it means inflammation. Episcleritis is the inflammation of episclera. It is a benign recurrent inflammation of the episclera which involves the overlying tenons capsule but not underlying sclera. So we have seen in the last video the tenons capsule covers the episclera or the sclera. So it is seen generally in young adults and it is more common in females than males. Now we'll see about the etiology of episcleritis. So it is either due to infections or any kind of allergy or any systemic diseases. So uh, first uh, we'll see first is idiopathic that is the cause, uh, the cause is not known. Or it can be due to infections such as syphilis, tuberculosis, herpes zoster virus infection, etc. The next is hypersensitivity reactions or allergic reactions to endogenous tubercular or streptococcal toxins. Or it can also be due to certain systemic diseases such as psoriasis, rosacea, and gout. Now we'll see the pathology of episcleritis. So there is there is some pathology in the episclera. So there will be some localized lymphocytic infiltration of the episclera. So the lymphocytes will infiltrate the episclera and therefore there will be edema and congestion of the overlying structures such as tenons capsule and bulbar conjunctiva which is aligned in the anterior part of the sclera. Now we will see the clinical features of, ep of episcleritis. So in this we will look at symptoms and signs. So first we will look at symptoms of episcleritis. So the most common symptom is redness of eye. So it comes under one of the differential diagnosis of redness of eye. Also other symptoms include foreign body sensation which will be a gritty or burning sensation in the eyes. So these are the two most common symptoms. Rarely photophobia or lacrimation may also occur. We will see the signs of episcleritis. Episcleritis may be simple or diffuse episcleritis or nodular episcleritis. In simple or diffuse episcleritis, there will be diffuse inflammation of the episclera due to which the episcleral vessels will become engorged and will be large and will run in radial directions. Due to this, the whole eye will appear as bright red or pink. So, there will be diffuse, diffuse uh, redness of the eye which will be bright in color in case of episcleritis. In nodular episcleritis, there is a pink or purple flat nodule will be formed. That is, it will, uh, near the limbus, there will be formation of a pink or purple flat nodule, which will be surrounded by an injection situated 2 to 3 centimeters away from the limbus. Nodule will be firm and tender. Tender means painful on touch and it can be moved separately from the sclera and the conjunctiva. So if we try to move the nodule, it can, it is mobile. It will be mobile from the sclera and the conjunctiva. Next, when we learn about scleritis, we will come to know that the nodule in scleritis is generally immobile. Clinical course. Clinical course, it... Uh, it resolves spontaneously from 10 days to 3 weeks. Sometimes a fleeting type of disease may also be seen which is known as episcleritis periodica. Now we'll look at treatment of episcleritis. The treatment, uh, since episcleritis is mild, therefore it is inflammation. So the treatment will be related to the anti-inflammatory drugs which includes topical uh, non-steroid anti-inflammatory drugs or topical corticosteroids or systemic non-steroid anti-inflammatory drugs or cold compresses or topical artificial tears. In topical NSIDs, the example is ketorolac. Topical corticosteroids will be fluoromethalone. Systemic NSIDs include fluorbiprofen or indomethacin. Cold compress uh, to provide symptomatic relief and topical artificial tears 0.5% carboxymethyl cellulose. That's it about episcleritis. The most important part in episcleritis are the signs which will be nodular and diffuse episcleritis. Thank you.